Is the housing market gonna crash in 2023? That seems to be one of the biggest question on a lot of people's minds out there right now. So this week, I'm answering that question and four more of the most common questions that I've received from our clients and followers, providing you with valuable insight and knowledge to help you make an informed decision on your real estate journey. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so the first question that we're addressing today is when will real estate prices go down? They have to, right? When I'm evaluating market statistics and trying to predict when prices will fluctuate, the main factor that I look for is inventory. So increasing inventory or supply could reestablish a proper balance of supply and demand, which could lower home prices. Inventory in Greenville though, where I am an agent, has been increasing slightly, largely due to new construction catching up with supply shortages. However, this increase in inventory still does not even get us back to what I call the pre-COVID levels of inventory. Our inventory is still objectively low and nowhere near the level that we would need to see price adjustments on most homes. So if inventory stays low and buyer demand remains as it is or even increases, prices will not go down in the Greenville market. Another inventory that I factor in is something that I call distressed inventory. But I'll address that towards the end of this video when we start talking about a 2023 housing crash. The next question I hear a lot is about tax benefits of real estate. Specifically, can real estate property taxes be deducted on your income tax? So the short answer to that question is yes, your real estate taxes can be deducted from your federal income taxes. This is accomplished by doing something that's called itemizing your deductions. When you itemize your deductions, you can deduct property taxes on your main residence and other real estate taxes that you own, totaling up to $10,000 in deductions. However, itemizing these is not always the best idea. Itemized deductions can often add up to less than even the standard deduction. So you may actually save money by taking the standard deduction instead of itemizing. This is because the standard deduction can reduce the amount of your income that's subject to the tax more than itemizing might. So this is why though you can technically deduct your real estate taxes, nearly 80% of homeowners opt for just going with the standard deduction route. All right, so let me be clear, I'm not a CPA, I'm not really qualified to give financial or accounting advice. This is just my experience that I've seen out there in the real world. If you're interested in learning more about how to properly account for your real estate purchases, I recommend that you reach out to an accountant or another professional in that line. So the next question that I want to address today has to do with paying real estate agents. Real estate agent fees are often a point of contention sometimes between clients and agents. But the question I hear the most is who actually pays the real estate agent in the transaction? So buyers and sellers are both responsible for certain fees during the real estate transaction process. Closing costs, appraisal fees, home inspections, earnest money, PMI, all those are examples of fees that are gonna be in your budget when you purchase. But in general, the real estate commissions are paid on the seller side of the ledger. So that's right, the seller pays for both the buyer and the seller's agent in a typical transaction. Most of the time, that fee is based on a percentage of the end selling price of a home. So if you're selling a home for $300,000, there'll be some percentage calculated as the commissions and that's split out between the buyer and the seller. So the seller side commission would pay for the photography, the marketing, that agent's expertise on pricing, all that and much, much more. While the majority of the clients that I work with are looking to buy or sell their primary residence, I also work with a handful of real estate investors that are looking to invest in real estate. So as an investor myself, a common question that I get asked is how do I know if a property is a good investment? So a good real estate investor knows what properties will be worth their time and then the ones that won't be worth your time. So they have to consider the list price, renovation, upfit cost, rent price, and potential resale, and a whole lot more. So the easiest and safest way to determine if a property is a good investment is to use the 1% rule. The 1% rule of real estate investing measures the price of the investment, so what you pay for, against the gross income it will generate every month. So for a potential investment to pass the 1% rule, its monthly rent must be equal to or no less than 1% of the purchase price. 
For instance, if you were to buy a $120,000 property, you'd want to see about $1,200 a month in income in order to meet that 1% rule. Again, it's just a thumbnail look at if a property might be a good investment. There's much more to look at beyond that. So this is just a general rule of thumb and a great starting point that I use when I consider a purchase for a real estate investment. The last question I want to address today, and possibly the question I hear most frequently these days, is, is there going to be a housing crash in 2023? Many people out there are convinced that the market just has to crash or correct any day now. So we saw record home sales and home prices rise dramatically over the past few years. So it can't be sustainable in a lot of people's minds. I see many people out there that are secretly hoping for a market crash and they'll bring home prices down with it. So like I shared at the beginning of the video when I was talking about home prices, the best way to answer the question is let's look at the numbers. So similar to home prices, inventory is a key factor when you consider the overall health of the housing market. It's the canary in the coal mine. So with inventory still low and buyer demand still very steady, the market will not crash anytime soon. Another similar factor to consider is something that we call distressed inventory. Distressed inventory, or you might hear it called a distressed sale, that's a property that must be sold quickly in order to get out of financial loss or bankruptcy. For instance, uh, foreclosures, that is a distressed sale. So back in 2008, we saw lots of distressed inventory coming onto the market and uh, banks foreclosed. There was lots of that out there that did cause a housing crash. Distressed inventory will indicate that homeowners are unable to pay their mortgage and is one of the biggest leading indicators of an oncoming recession. So, are we seeing any signs of distressed inventory right now in 2023? The answer is absolutely not. In fact, mortgage delinquencies are at an all-time low, indicating a very, very healthy real estate market. So based on these statistics, it just doesn't look like I see a crash coming anytime in 2023 or even early 2024. All right, so there you have it. Those are five of the most common questions that I hear as a real estate agent and investor with over 20 years of experience here in the upstate, including my thoughts on the potential of a housing crash. If this video answered one of your questions, give it a like or a comment in below and let me know if it was helpful for you. Be sure to subscribe for more real estate advice and news about what's going on in Greenville. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.